Hey guys, it's Apostrophe. Uh, welcome to my sketchbook tour. On the floor of my bedroom, man, I wish you guys could see just how messy this setup is. In fact, maybe I'll put a picture of it on the screen. I'll try to. Um, but I have my sketchbook here, and I have things to talk about about it. There's a lot to talk about when it comes to the work that was created in this era of my life, and, and like, just, just exactly what's in this thing, how full it is, because my goodness, it is, it is jam-packed, my guys. It is absolutely packed. But despite being on the floor of my bedroom, um, I feel ready to show you guys this sketchbook and the secrets that it has inside of it. The dates that it was done during are right here on the side. As you can see, it is old, and I mean, it's not, it's not old, like, like really old, it's just, typically, I see most artists finish sketchbooks pretty quickly, I take a long time to do it. A lot of the work in here is finished work that I often post online, with a little bit of editing. You know, some, some of the art you're gonna see in this is art that I would post edited, so you'll see the unedited versions of it without all the filters and such that make your sketches in your sketchbook look nice, but November 2018 to February 2021, that would make this bad boy, um, <laughs> I gotta count on my fingers, one, two, three, uh, three or four years old, you know, big boy, and because of that, I know it says SCAD here, this is not my SCAD uh, sketchbook, that is a different sketchbook that I'm working on. Right now, this is actually my county slash community college sketchbook, which is a topic that I love to talk about. None of these stickers are mine. I didn't I didn't design any of these stickers. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Most of them are from Redbubble. Um, and then recently I've started shopping for more stickers on like Etsy, which is way better. But uh, yeah, here we go. I say we just dive right in. I want to make sure there's nothing like um, <laughs> personal information on the first pages, because there's not. Uh, yeah. Here we go. This is some locations that my sketchbook has gone to. Um, wasn't very, very far. And this was the first sketch that I put in it in, in 2018. Mind you, um, I graduated from high school in 2017 and started at community college around late 2017, early 2018 and this was really the sketchbook that I had started out with. This was my first time using a brush pen and I I just was I guess playing with with it. It's really not <laughs> not my best work to put in the front of my sketchbook, but alas, it sits in in the front, right right up right up front. But uh then you start getting towards uh other other stuff. Sorry about the sunlight. It's the morning. <laughs> it's like, it's like, uh, I think it's like 10.30 a.m. right now. Here's a little, this is Karen, Karen, Karen Gorn? Karen Always a problem when a manga character that you like hasn't shown up in an anime yet, and you don't know how to pronounce the name yet, but... Um, I'm a big Hoseki no Kuni fan, Land of the Lustrous fan, so you might be seeing a lot of fan art from that here. Especially 2018, I think the anime was airing. Possibly in 2017. Got a little Goku. So I'm just, I'm not going to describe every drawing that I come across here. I'm not going to try to. I will show you guys every page as much as I can. You know, you never know when there's like an address or something on a page. I do tend to stick things in my sketchbook, but um, I would, I would like to talk a little bit about community college, I guess, because that's the era that I made this sketchbook in. By the way, this material here is Duralar. No one asked what it is. It's called Duralar. <laughs> um, so yeah, some of these pages are out of order. This one says 2019, but it, um, this one was made in 20, 2018, so it could get a little bit confusing sometimes, you know, with the dates. Big Hoseki no Kuni fan at the time. And making most of these in community college, I mean, between class, outside of class at home, uh, thing about community college, go home afterwards, wherever your home may be, and save some money. So I I think it's important that I talk about something like that while I'm doing 
a sketchbook tour because sketchbook tours, people love watching them and it's a great time to, I guess, spread a message that you want to talk about. I don't know. Um, I'm currently a student at SCAD, Savannah College Art and Design. I'm in there for animation. But uh, after high school, I had a hard time getting into college. I actually really wasn't able to get into any specific colleges after I had graduated high school. Um, because my grades were so bad and senior year was kind of a mess for me mentally, I, I didn't have the GPA, I didn't have the test scores, I had nothing kind of after high school, I didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. I think a lot of students find themselves like that after graduating high school, or, or maybe they don't even get to graduate. Um, but for me, uh, after really just being like bummed out that I was not going to get to go to a four-year school, I was introduced to community college pretty quickly and started attending. And about ha half a year after graduating from high school in 2018, I started attending community college. And I have to say that it was a fantastic experience, and I think that a lot more people really should try doing that, even if your grades aren't bad. I've had so many of my peers come up to me and talk to me and say, wow, I really, I really regret not going to community college like you did. I'm in so much debt, and I'm not making enough money as I wanted to, and it's, it's sad. It's a bummer. And I have a lot of people that tell me that they waited that they waited that they had that they wished that they had waited <laughs> sorry after high school to do something like and decide maybe they want to do community um, I see a lot more students now doing community college but uh it's just it's still I feel like it's still not appreciated enough especially for artists let me talk about this real quickly I went to Italy <laughs> um and in Get this 2019, so the year before the pandemic, I got to, got to go to Italy, and I'm I commonly will stick things into my sketchbook, so I've got this straight out of the Sistine Chapel in Vatican, little brochure from there. Just I just stick things in here. A lot of the of the art that you'll see here, um, I I was sketching around while I was in Italy on the plane, etc. Uh, you know, just just sketches usually. It is a sketchbook, of course. But a lot of this art, I mean, has not seen the light of day, like, being posted anywhere, or it's so old, like this piece, that you might not be able to find it anywhere online. So, community college. I went to community college. I was there for, I mean, I, I graduated in 2020. I think, like, about January, I think I graduated in the winter with my associates. There was no graduation ceremony held because of COVID, which is really sad, <laughs> really sad, but uh, I appreciate that school so much. And I, I hate this idea that American schools put out there that you're an artist, oh, you have to go to art school, you have to go to SCAD, CalArts RISD, uh, etc. <laughs> Just naming the ones that hit the top of my head. Of course, I'm a student at SCAD, which we can talk about why that is. Um, but there's this, there was this big pressure, you know, when you're in high school to go to a four-year school. And if you're an, a, an artist who wants to work in the field, there's this pressure to go to an art school, which is a private institution usually. And typically, quite expensive and perhaps you're not even ready for it. CalArts many many students out of high school just aren't ready and I I feel like I never see people get into CalArts that are straight out of high school. Totally normal. These are uh, whenever I do big watercolor paintings I do these little I did, they're not thumbnails. <laughs> they're first drafts. They're small the, the piece is usually pretty massive after that and I always do these little these little ones. So you'll see that throughout my sketchbook. This was actually, I think this is 2018, 2019, the year that I learned how to paint with watercolor, which is now my favorite medium. Oh, you'll probably also see a lot of Utena art. I mean, she's probably one of the characters that I sketch the most. So 
I went to community college and had a lot of um, dis displeasure with going there at first. I, I had always wanted to go to SCAD in high school. It was my dream school. I, at the time, I didn't know I wanted to go into animation either. I just wanted to go to SCAD and be famous big artist, uh, you know, <laughs> which I'm not still. <laughs> still haven't lived up to that portion of, of my dreams, but just very funny how, how I wanted to go to SCAD in high school. I ended up at community college and I was very displeased at first. And, but quickly you begin to realize that the curriculum is the same. It's very, it's very the same as a four-year, and you realize quickly, like, these smaller classrooms, um, they help, they're better, almost, than a four-year. I, it's so much cheaper, it, it, it's so much more one-on-one -on -one with the professors, you find that your classmates are, are different than if you, than in a four-year. I've done both now, you know, I'm at SCAD right now. Granted, it's online for now still, but I'm at SCAD and I went to community college. The student body has a completely different energy. Like, when you're at community college, it, it feels almost... It is, of course, a smaller school, but it also feels a bit more... I don't know goal-centric, realistic, like you guys are focusing on getting jobs. Most of these people that I was in school with don't go to a four-year school after graduating community college. Some of them do, but a lot of them go straight into work, you know, apprenticeships and etc. And it's fascinating, like, a lot of these people are very successful artists and would never need ever to go to somewhere like RISD or SCAD or SVA. Which leads to the question of why am I at SCAD, right? <laughs> well, um, you know, I guess it's a little complicated when you think about it. This is an interesting drawing that I did real quick before we talk about why I transferred schools. <laughs> Um, I did like a drawing in 2018 and then I came back and I did her, her head in 2020. It's a yellow diamond from Hoseki no Kuni because I'm a, I'm a weeb, you know? <laughs> big, big weeb energy and yellow is like one of my favorite characters in the show and in the manga. So I, I, I decided I want to go to SCAD. <laughs> why? <laughs> that is always the question is why? Um, while I was at community college, and stu I was studying illustration, it was my it was my major, my focus, my concentration was illustration for the time that I was there, and I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to do with that. My professor, who was an illustration major and teaching the illustration related classes, came up to me one day and said that perhaps I should try animation. He said, your art is very uh, animation focused, obviously. You can probably see I have been watching perhaps too much anime and it has affected my art style. <laughs> I didn't really watch a lot of anime until college and once once college hit, got started watching anime. Now I'm just, I got such an anime style going on that it's, it's, it's hilarious. So, he said to me, you're, you, it should be an animation. He said that illustration is um, a bad field to be in right now. He said that it's hard to make money. It's tough, you know. It could be, it could be problematic and it's, it's not as fulfilling as something like animation. He says that, and he's an illustration guy. I was like, oh, he said I should go into animation. Why did I not think of that? <laughs> that was my first thought. I had always loved animation. I love anime. I love cartoons. I love looking at movies and pointing out areas where visual effects were used and such. I just love all things animation and storytelling, really. Um, so it was like, oh shit, like why have I not thought that I could do something like that? I could learn it. Because here I am in, in community college, I'm an illustration major, major, it's an associate's degree, but major with our quotes, and I'm kind of learning stuff, but 
I'm, I'm maxing out my knowledge in illustration. And I don't mean to say that I'm the greatest illustrator in the world. I think that I need to practice more and to make more illustrations and get better at it. But I feel like I've learned everything. I just need to integrate it into my work. So I, I graduation comes close here at community college. In fact, maybe around, well, we're not quite there yet with the era, <laughs> with the sketchbook. But uh, it's almost 2020, it's t late 2019 perhaps, and I'm thinking to myself, um, I'm going to take him up on that offer. I think I'm going to apply to some animation schools. And I thought, I, first I checked CalArts, like everyone does check CalArts and see what the hell do you need to get into CalArts? Oh my god, it's crazy. CalArts is insane. So CalArts was immediately a no. You know, I kind of wanted to go away to a four-year school right away after college too, and I didn't have, I didn't have the portfolio for that. <laughs> and I think applications were closed. So I take the time and I meet with a SCAD recruiter, Savannah College Art and Design, in the area. Um, and I, and I talk to them, they have rolling admission. You get in not based on portfolio, which is strange, I know, it's strange that that happens, but I, it happens. They have faith, <laughs> I guess. So, I, I talk with the SCAD, uh, you know, advisor or whatever, and I decide, like, I think I'm gonna apply and try to go there. And I'm gonna try to get into SCAD. And of course, very quickly, I get in. <laughs> so, the transfer process, easy, for the most part. I, I feel the need to elaborate about exactly how it is transferring from a university that is largely, I mean, it's not a university, it's a community college. I guess it's a university. Transferring from a school that, that I guess cares a lot for the well-being of the student body and that um, does a lot of, of work to keep it inexpensive and accessible. You know, the community college I went to is small and homey and friendly. The, you, if you look even a little bit lost on campus, someone runs up to you and, and tries to give you guidance. Even students do that. It's, it's incredible. The school is just wonderful. That I love that school, you know? And transferring to a private university has been something. <laughs> Luckily, I have some years of experience under my belt of uh, manipulating colleges to get what I want, I guess, because I've been a college student for a long time now, and I think when I transferred I was... I think I was 20. 20 years old, transferring in as a sophomore junior hybrid kind of creature. <laughs> and it was hard getting all my credits accepted. It was really difficult. For a while in there too, they weren't accepting all my credits and they were refusing to accept them. And I told them, I said, I'm going to go to SBA instead since you guys aren't accepting all my credits. That was a lie. It was a really big lie because SBA didn't want my credits at all. <laughs> at least SCAD was accepting some of them. So I lied to SCAD. I said, look, I'm going to transfer out because SBA is doing me a better offer. And they ended up giving me more scholarship money, which is hilarious, you know? Very funny that they would do that. These sketches are very faint in here. You know, lots of unfinished sketch work which happens. It gets more and more sketchy, I feel like I want to get more and more loose. Um, yeah, I, I just threatened them a little bit with another school, the possibility of me transferring. Here's a commission that was scrapped. Just an uh, unusual client to work with. Kind of bugged me and I had to drop him. <laughs> sort of, kind of. Um, so I, I eventually decided I would settle down at SCAD. They gave me a little extra money. Um, there's a lot of controversy over SCAD, as there is pretty much all private institution has their controversy here in America, in the United States in particular. 
the controversies never end when it comes to private institutions. They make a ton of money, it's a huge business, and they don't like to budge. They, they don't really care too much about student, student health, student accommodations, etc. So it could be very challenging coming to a, a private university and realizing that the school isn't giving you what you want and what you need properly, especially as a transfer student. It's, it's annoying. It's painful. You really have to twist their arms sometimes. But I decided to go to SCAD because I couldn't, I don't know how to animate. In fact, I know a little bit more now from taking their classes online. I haven't gone in person yet. I know a little bit more now about how to animate, but for the most part, I still don't know. And I don't have an animation portfolio at all. You know, that's the reason why I came to SCAD, truly, because the professors I've heard are great. I've heard the connection is great. The connections are amazing. I've heard that the other students are, are competitive. I enjoy a competitive school environment, and I decided that it would be, it would be advantageous for me to go to SCAD. So... <laughs> Uh, unlike some of my peers who did not end up going away to a four-year university after community, I ended up a SCAD. I want to build that portfolio, and I saved a lot of money going to community college. And I have a good scholarship, decent enough, so I ended up, ended up going. And for the most part, I've been going online, which saves me, I mean, even more money, really. But it's difficult to say what's the right decision for you if you're watching this and, and you're you're maybe you are in college, you're you're in art school, you're doubting your decision to go there. I don't know what what the right decision is for everyone is completely different. A lot of people say that art school is worthless, useless, no one should go. A lot of people think that you have to go if you want to break into the industry quickly and make a lot of money. I don't think it's so black and white. I really don't. It's very gray. For someone like me, especially someone who saved money going to community and just thinks maybe this school is just the right fit. Despite the costs, you know, I've saved a lot of money up. I, I've had jobs in between going to school, you know, I, I, I'm very old now. <laughs> By the time I get to SCAD in the fall, I will be a 22-year-old uh, junior, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting to say that, you know, I'm, I'll, be the, I'll be one of the older people in my class. So, <laughs> it's really up to everyone. It's, it's not so black and white. Don't think it's so black and white. That always used to scare me when I was in high school. I'd go on YouTube and I'd watch these videos about art school and how it's disgusting, takes all your money, yada yada, it, it's not worth it, or maybe it's so worth it and you have to go to CalArts and RISD and you gotta go, otherwise you'll never break into the animation industry. And look, I've never worked in the industry, but I have a lot of college experience. And I could tell you from a college student's standpoint that it absolutely depends on your comfort level with money and with your education and how far are, along are you in in the field that you want to be working in and there are moments in fact where i see someone who just graduated high school and has been animating for a long time sometimes you don't need to go to to college at all a lot of the times when you're applying for jobs in the animation industry, for example, they don't ask for your college experience. They ask for your portfolio. I think that that's important to keep in mind, you know. When you feel that your portfolio is good enough, break into the industry. Don't wait for college. Go for it. Uh, obviously, don't get too cocky. 
if you have an issue being cocky about your work, which some people <laughs> do, <laughs> no judgment there. It happens, you know, it just, it sometimes it happens. You always get someone to review your work and tell you whether or not you're ready. But some people really are just ready. And I know students who have dropped out of SCAD halfway to go to the industry. Some of them have gotten jobs while at SCAD and decided maybe they don't want to finish their bachelor's right now because they're already doing the job that they wanted. Isn't it complicated? College is so complicated. And I think a lot of that complication comes towards price. You know, if school wasn't so expensive, I think a lot more people wouldn't be making crazy videos about why or why not you shouldn't or should go to art school. I'm at SCAD because my grades were good, uh, so I got good money, and I'd spent pretty much like three years at community college doing illustration, and I felt ready to go. I mean, these drawings are still from 2019. <laughs> this drawing right here, it's from 2019, and you know, so I it's just funny to me how time passes, like it feels like I drew this yesterday or whatever. But it really was a while ago, so that's that's crazy. Crazy to me. My art has improved a lot since I drew this little drawing, I think. A lot of this art is, is uh, particularly dated and it's, it's fantastic how much your art grows when you're in school. Sometimes people don't do don't oh yeah that's another <laughs> whole other conversation sometimes you aren't meant for learning through school atmosphere that's fine <laughs> don't don't go to college you should figure it, try to figure that out early and <laughs> try to figure it out early whether or not you should go to college or not <laughs> think think about it hard do i am i good at learning in a college school setting or not Here's some self-portraits that I, I mean, not self-portraits, sorry, none of these people are me. Portraits, you know, I did that little Pinterest thing where you go on Pinterest and you draw some of the people that you see. So some of these faces are probably familiar to you guys because you've seen them drawn like a billion times on Instagram, hence why I don't post a lot of the stuff in here. A lot of the stuff in here is referenced heavily from other, other content and I can't, I can't always remember what each of these drawings has as a reference for me to properly credit said reference, so I usually just don't post a lot of this work. <laughs> Here is a fun one. I love this. This is my first painting in gouache of Legoshi from Beastars. My first gouache painting. There's a lot of firsts in this sketchbook, a lot of firsts. Here is a uh, Christmas card that I designed. It's my, it's the, my family's Christmas card in 2019, sorry. I'm all upside down and backwards, it would seem. Christmas card for 2019, sorry about the shadow. It's so small, I know. I've been doing the Christmas cards for my family since uh, 2018? Yeah, 2018. There's 2018. <laughs> There's the 2018 one. It's a big step between this one and the 2019 one. Us playing poker at, at, at the uh, poker table. I don't like this drawing nearly as much as I like Legoshi, by the way. <laughs> so, this is, I mean, the, all the art in here was created during my time at community college. So, if that's interesting to you, I don't know, but none of this work was has been done while I'm at Savannah, even online. It's all just been um, at, at community college, in class, outside of class, etc. Some of these are for class, and here, you know, I, you've probably already seen, but I got handouts in here and stuff from, from school. This is a handout in particular about how to write artist bio and whatever the hell this is. Art speak. And my professor gave us a sheet of words that we should use in our 
in our uh, to describe our body of work words like vulnerable and synthesis very very impressive stuff and i think towards the end of this sketchbook you'll notice a lot more pages like this where i'm very very sketchy very sketchy because i i really have been trying to i guess get better at illustrating now especially this is right near graduation this is when i'm having i'm having some gallery showings the pandemic is mere months away, maybe even less than that. <laughs> Let's see, January 2020, this one, January. So the pandemic is mere months away. I'm preparing for graduation and I have some gallery showings coming up. I'm working on my concentrations, which you guys can see on my website if you ever have the chance to hop over there. The link is in the description, of course to my website you could always view my finished concentrations on there those are just the sketches i'm preparing for graduation so a lot of these pages are very sketchy because i'm doing a lot of studying i guess on my own fundamental wise i really want to get better at illustration my watercolors are i mean i'm just trying to knock them out in time to graduate here's a list of the gallery showings that I had that quarter and then we had a pandemic so some of them didn't occur just fine it happens you know what are you gonna do I had the longest uh, we, we were a part of the longest displayed art piece at Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown because the pandemic happened and our and our artwork was stuck in in the Mayo <laughs> So it was technically probably one of the longest exhibitions on display, just because it was stuck in there and no one, no one was able to get in and get it. Here's some gouache. <laughs> lots of, lots of playing around, testing new things happening here. You know, oh man, I, I'm graduating school and I feel like maybe my fundamentals aren't good enough. Maybe that's what's going through my head here. I'm trying to really nail out the anatomy. Happening. Sorry if there's some nudity here. I don't think YouTube is gonna even care or catch it or whatever. I don't think there's much. Very, very, very interesting. <laughs> the anatomy. I have certainly gotten better at anatomy since doing these. I think it's been it's been about a year, over a year since I've done these sketches. I've definitely gotten better at this anatomy stuff. I mean, here I'm just trying to connect the legs to torsos, just trying to figure that out. Whole thing on its own. Lots of legs, lots of cat anatomy, which I find I'm better at drawing chunky cats, probably because I used to draw a lot of furry art as a kid, so. Unfinished sketches, you know how it is. <laughs> This, I mean, these are drawings that never see the light of day on any of my social media or anything, so you hear it, you see it here first, I guess, and you will never see it again. <laughs> sketches, sketches, sketches. This is a drawing in the style of my, uh, my high school art, actually. That's what I was trying to do there with this one. It's in the style of my work while I was in high school. Maybe I'll do a high school sketchbook tour, but that one would need a lot of censoring. <laughs> I'd have to go through my high school sketchbook and put post-its on a lot of things to cover a lot of things up. But I did want to make a little bit of a drawing reminiscent of my kind of high school style. Which I feel like I've lost a lot of this, this style in my recent art, I'm trying to get it back, maybe. Here are some just more sketches, maybe a little maple, I don't know, is showing, who knows. Show you guys this guts sketch that I did next to um, Foss from, from Hoseki no Kuni. And I wrote their ages down because Foss is way older than guts ever will be, as far as I know for now. <laughs> Also a big Berserk fan, obviously. I've, I've drawn Guts a few times in this sketchbook, I think, and he's just one of my favorite characters of all time. I absolutely adore him. 
some hands. Hands, hands. I think someone was... Uh, I was talking to someone on- this is during the pandemic. I'm at home at this point, in lockdown. I think someone was on Discord call with me asking me for help with drawing hands. And I typically am okay drawing hands if I have a solid reference. Typically. <laughs> Not all the time. And my hand is naturally misshapen, so I always have to look at photo reference. I can never use my own hands, unless I'm doing a self-portrait. Just some eyes, lots of eyes. Here I was planning for my my sketchbook museum sketchbook, which the tour for that sketchbook is here on YouTube as well. It has some views on there. A lot of people I think liked that one, so go check that out if you want to after this video. A lot of eyes. I, I always have an issue with style, which perhaps you'll see pointed out here a lot by myself. I do a lot of self-commentary on my own art in my sketchbook. I will oftentimes write things down next to my own drawings criticizing myself, saying, do better, like, this isn't what I want for my art, etc. But I always struggle with what I want with my art. I never really know what I want with my art and Especially style. I just never know what I want to do with my art style. Still trying to figure that out. Like here I wrote <laughs> in big letters. Uh, don't want my art to look like basic anime art. Which is still factual. I really don't want my art to look like basic anime art. Sometimes it just does. Can't really... I, for some reason I've been having issues preventing that. Sort of... Uh, snowball effect of watching too much anime and your art ends up starting to look like it. I hate this drawing. <laughs> it's fundamentally fine, but boy, is it just like basic. So here I'm, I'm in, I mean, I'm, I'm quarantining, I'm home, alone, pandemic style. Perhaps I, I didn't get my, I don't have a job yet. I worked at Panera during the pandemic a bit. And I'm just sketching around, trying to sort things out. This is Ryder, who you... I mean, I have to have had sketched her before in this sketchbook, so she's probably shown up before. Her design changes pretty frequently. She's the main character of this comic that I've been scripting for a long time now. You know, sometimes comic artists can never decide on what they want for their script or their plot, and they keep rewriting it. That's, that's me. I'm that trope of... The, the artist that keeps rewriting the script over and over again because they just, they can't decide what they want. Oh, I can't show that. Wait, can I? <laughs> uh, uh, no, I cannot. <laughs> I'm not going to, just out of safety. That's a check, there's a check in here. <laughs> I think the information is, is cropped off of it, but I'm gonna skip over those pages just because you're not missing much anything. It's the check in this sketchbook, which would be that check in particular, is the first check I ever received from Twitch streaming, so very cool. I haven't received that many since then. I'm not some kind of big Twitch art streamer or anything. I just figured I'd stick it in there, you know, to commemorate I made money off of doing, I guess, something that I that I really love and enjoy, and that was really cool to me, so I, I absolutely stuck it in my sketchbook. Here we're nearing the end, you know, the end of the sketchbook. This is very sketchy, stylistic stuff. A lot of these are referenced from things, so be careful <laughs> looking at this. Some of it might be a little bit heavily referenced, perhaps. That is the nature of the sketchbook. You know, these especially, these are, I'd have to say I did these from my head. I don't think that these are referenced. But a lot of times the art in my sketchbook is, is very referenced and it can be quite a, quite a pain to remember exactly what the sources were for the art. This is Pod Paracha from Huseki no Kuni, a character that I really enjoy. And then I have a cosplay all made and done for, but there were there haven't been any conventions to go to, so big bummer. 
cosplay just sitting in my closet waiting to be worn to a convention. <laughs> it's getting very sketchy. It's getting sketchier and sketchier. It would seem like, um, yeah, <laughs> we're very, we're near the end. We're, we're pretty much there. Uh, really right, right before I started at SCAD, I like came in and just finished this sketchbook. I was like, I have to get this sketchbook done before I go to SCAD. I am not having this sketchbook for any longer. I did not want to have it any longer. Here I was planning for my comic, my web, my webtoon, Risk It for the Biscuit, which is currently inactive on hiatus in questionable circumstances. <laughs> I don't know what I want to do with it yet. Uh, maybe I'll make a couple chapters this summer or something, we'll see. But I did it for a school assignment, so I might never see any work or anything anymore. Here I drew some Kane from uh, Utena. She's one of my favorite Utena characters. Hella underappreciated, never gets any type of good screen time. <laughs> so I draw her every now and then just to appreciate an underappreciated character from a show that I really love. Little sketches on this little cutout. And of course, this is the last page. This is the last thing that I did in 2021. We finally made it to 2021. This is probably the only drawing from 2021 as well, because shortly after this, I commissioned my friend Christy to make me a sketchbook, and I've been hitting up that one ever since. It's me, me and my cat, Lola. <laughs> me and Lola. So that is it. I mean, there is nothing after that. This is a big boy, isn't it? But I hope you guys enjoyed that. I don't know what else to say about it. Took me a long time to finish this sketchbook. And the motto of my life is just don't rush into things, take your time, do things right. And I think that that sketchbook fits this pretty well. Oh my goodness, you guys should see how big my, my next sketchbook is. It's like double the size, I think. It's about the same uh, height and width, you know, but... Oh. This guy hasn't even been drawn in, and, and he's already super, super thick. I had this thing custom, custom made by my, for, brought by my friend. I put stickers all over it, you know, because that's who I am. But this is my new sketchbook. I will not be showing anything inside of it. It's all a secret for any future sketchbook tours that I might be doing. My sticker quality has upgraded. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming by and. I guess hearing me rant on about the art on this book, it can be kind of hard to talk when you're <laughs> trying to focus on your sketchbook as well. So the ramblings that I talked about might not be so focused. It's not scripted or anything, it's just totally off the cuff. So hopefully it wasn't too confusing and maybe some of you guys found my message about school to be helpful. But uh, of course, Go ahead and watch some of my other videos. Subscribe if you enjoy my content. I really want to post on YouTube more. I do say that all the time, but <laughs> I'm trying, I'm trying. Where I do post more is Twitch. You know, if, if you're interested in my live content, where a lot of my YouTube uploads are re-uploads from Twitch, you can come to my Twitch stream, twitch.tv slash apostrophe. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Every single week. At least there, I'm consistent. But I'll see you guys all later. Have an amazing day.